اهل In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and good hope to all forever. Amen. Strengthen our Lord and our God, our weakness, by your mercy, that we may celebrate the holy mysteries, which have been given for the renewal and redemption of our weak nature, through the mercy of your beloved Son, O Lord of all forever. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Hallelujah. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me be not put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Yes, let none that wait for you be put to shame. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. Hallelujah. And grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray, peace be with us. We adore and glorify the great and holy name of your glorious Trinity for the grace that you have given us, O Lord of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those whose way is blameless. Blessed are the children who were worthy to see Christ while entering Jerusalem, seated on a colt. The children carrying olive branches praised before him, singing, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who came in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Peace be with us. When the pleasant fragrance of your tender love embraces us, our Lord and our God, we are enlightened by your truth and made worthy to welcome the revelation of your beloved Son from heaven. There we will praise you unceasingly and glorify you in your crown church, which is filled with all graces and blessings. For you are the Lord and creator of all forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Datum Nahman et Parain, what to Parok and no Shathan, Moda Yul Maria will Mesmar and Ashma Homoraima, La Humar at Hulla Modenan, La Hisham Shiham Shapinan. Datum Nahman et Balarain, what to bar open no shatan? La Walaura Walaru Hak, for the sham men alam, Wadam men alam, Mamil Wamin, La Humarat Hulla Maudinan. Qaddish <laughs> O holy, glorious, mighty, and immortal one who dwells and delights in the saints, we implore you, Lord, turn to us, forgive us, and have mercy on us as always, O Lord of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Enlighten us, our Lord and our God, that we may listen to and understand your pleasant life giving and divine commands. Grant through your grace and mercy that we may gain the gifts of love, hope, and salvation for our bodies and souls. And always sing a perpetual praise to you at all times, O Lord of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Bless me, Father. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. 
For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, What are these two olive trees on the right and the playing in its streets? For there shall be a sowing of peace. The vine shall yield its fruit, and the ground shall give its increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And you have been a byword of cursing among the nations. O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and you shall be a blessing. Things that you shall do, speak the truth to one another, render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another, and love no false oath, for all these things I hate, says the Lord. Then shall the trees of the forest exalt for the entrance of Christ, which we celebrate with hymns of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. With the oil of gladness above your companions, for the entrance of Christ, which we celebrate with hymns of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray, peace be with us. A reading from honor of Paul to the Romans, bless thee, Father. From honor of Paul to the Romans, bless thee, Father. Now, I'm speaking to you, Gentiles, and as much then as I am an apostle of Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean? but life from the dead. If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole batch. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in their place to share the riches of the olive tree, do not boast over the branches. If you do boast, remember, it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. You will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast only through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note, then, the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even the others, if they do not persist in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you have been cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree. Let us stand in preparation to hear the Holy Gospel. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory above the heavens is chanted by the mouth of babies and infants. You have founded a bulwark because of your foes. There's still the enemy and um, um, The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. And when they drew near to Jerusalem and came, came to Bethpage to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their, spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple of God and drove out all who sold and, brought, and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house seat. There's so much space up here. There's a whole row in the front is empty. A whole row. I'd love to get everybody seated if we can. All righty. Thank you so much. We appreciate your cooperation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. So, what's all the fuss? Why are we clapping and waving these branches and, and um, doing halahel? What's this all about? Today is about Jesus being king. Jesus, Jesus, he is king. Today, if we celebrate Palm Sunday, of course we are all celebrating Palm Sunday, what we are saying is that Jesus is my king. There's a difference there. Jesus is king. Is he my king? As we look at the story, the people were extremely excited because they wanted to crown Jesus as their king. However, they expected Jesus to be the king that they wanted, a political king. They wanted Jesus to be the king that was going to come and save them from the, Rome, from the Romans, who were obviously, they were occupying Israel at the time, and they were abusing the Jews at the time. So they thought that Jesus was going to come strong. He comes with 12 guys who literally are, are nothing. They're nobodies. They're fishermen. Jesus comes with peace, not to fight with a sword. So Jesus, yes, he is the Savior, and he's come to save them, but he doesn't want to save them from what they want to be saved from. He comes to save them from what and from who? Who is the real enemy that Jesus has come to save all of us, to save all of us from? Satan. From sin. Today, Jesus is trying to still save us. Just because Jesus died and rose doesn't mean that we still don't need to be saved. The devil is still real. The devil is still working. The devil has not lost his power yet until Jesus comes back again. And Satan will be thrown into hell for all of eternity. But as of right now, Jesus said that Satan is the prince of this world right now. And, and really, if we look around and if we're honest, we can see Satan's work all over the world, right? Just look at social media. Just look at your Instagram. You'll see the devil. You'll see the devil everywhere. Look at your phone. Look at the news. Look at it in your families. We see the devil everywhere. So today, yes, Jesus is king, but who are we giving power to is the question. Who are we giving the power to be king to? That's still our choice. And oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, we're waiting for God to do it all for us. We're waiting for God to just come and fix everything without realizing that you and I still have power to give power to either Satan or God. The Jews and the children and everybody that day, they screamed, Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? Do you know what, that, what it means? What does it translate to? Somebody said it. Save us. Save us. They screamed, save us. Today, we scream, save us, Jesus. Save us from a lot of things. 
There's a lot of things that we need Jesus to save us from today, this day. We do have power. We do have control to make decisions. Absolutely. But in another sense, we literally, no matter how much we try to control and no matter how perfect we make decisions, sometimes we can't control the results, can we? So guys, when we come to God and we say to God, God save us, it's kind of actually a contradiction. And I'm going to explain that. We call this word a paradox. This situation, save me from this illness, save me from this financial problem, save me from this relationship, whatever it might be, it doesn't mean that I do nothing, does it? It doesn't mean that I just stand out of the way because I'm asking God to save me, so I just stand around and I do nothing about it. I'm asking for God's help, but at the same time, I have to do something. So it sounds like a contradiction. God, help me. God, I need you. God, I can't do this without you because you are God and I'm not. But at the same time, God is saying, you got to move too. There's a beautiful quote. I love this quote. And it goes like this. Pray as if everything depended on God and work as if everything depended on you. I'm going to say that again. Pray as if everything depended on God, but work as if everything depended on you. That means that I have to be vulnerable with God. When I go to prayer, that means that I have to come before God and say, God, it all depends on you. Because no matter what I do, I can't be in control. I can't fix the results. I can't control the results. I can only do my part. But God, I depend completely on you. And I trust you. Whatever the results are going to be, Lord, I trust you. Whatever it's going to be. But at the same time, I have to make an effort I have to listen to the people around me who are trying to teach me and guide me and maybe even check me a little bit. Because we, don't, we all need to be checked, right? We all need to be held accountable. We all need to be shown. We all need to be taught. And again, because man is so prideful and arrogant and egotistical, we don't want to be taught by God. We don't want to be taught by the priest. We don't want to be taught by, by our spouse. We don't want to be taught by anybody. We want to be, again, in control. I know. I know how to do everything. Abuna, please don't teach me. I'm, I'm 70 years old. I know exactly how to read the Bible, and I know everything. Father, don't teach me about, you know, this. Don't teach me about that. Um, wife, please don't teach me about finances. I know better. We don't want to be taught. We don't want to be guided. We want to be in control. And this is, my brothers and sisters, I think this is why a lot of people, they don't want to waste, the, they, they think that it's a waste of time to come to church and pray. To come to Mass once a week, to spend one hour with God, is actually showing God, God, I'm willing to be weak. I'm willing to allow you to be in control. Because now, you have to be vulnerable with God. You've got to come to church, and you've got to listen to the, to the priest, and you've got to listen to His Word. And now God's word is challenging me. And why would I want to be challenged by God? I don't need, my life is good the way it is. God, stay out of it. God, I'll let you in my life when I want you in my life. When things are going wrong, I'll let you in. But if, if, if not, please stay in your, in your lane, Jesus. And we only want Jesus when we want him. We only want him when we have an expectation of him. But other than that, Jesus, stay out of it. I'm good. Stay out of my finances, my money. Jesus, that's not your place. I'll figure that out. Jesus, you know what? Just stay out of this relationship. You can, you can get involved in this relationship, but this one, Lord, stay out of it. And we don't necessarily say those words to God, do we? We don't say to Jesus, stay out of it, but... But, by our, but our lack of inviting him into it is us saying, Jesus, stay out of it, which is basically saying, I don't need you. Don't save me here. I don't need your saving help here. 
I only need your help here, but I don't need your help here. It's a dangerous place to be, isn't it? It's dangerous to rely only on ourselves, isn't it? To say to Jesus, Jesus, I need you here, but I don't need you here. Please don't get involved here in my life is very dangerous. Again, we don't want to be vulnerable with God. Because who is the person that says, save me? The person who is in need? The person who is weak? The person who is um, who's desperate? That's the person who says, save me. The person who recognizes that they need help. Do we recognize here today how much we need help? Are we willing to say to God, and we all say, God, help me. God, help me. But we don't mean it. Because we don't actually really want to do anything about it. We don't want to help ourselves. We say to God, God, help me, but we don't believe that he's going to actually help us. And if we do believe he's going to help us, we don't want to do anything about it. So it's got to be both. This is why it's a paradox. This is why it sounds like a contradiction. Because it can't just be praying all day and expecting God to do everything for me and doing nothing, or trying to do everything and not actually coming to prayer and being weak and surrendering. I got to surrender and I got to work. Does that make sense? If I know I have a test, and it's a big test, do I just pray all day and tell God, God, uh, please help me pass this test and not study? How do you think I'm going to do? Not going to do well, aren't I? And if I, if I only study all day long and I don't come to church, and I don't show God by my behavior, by my action, God, I'm willing for you to let... I'm welcoming you in, God. You can come into this test. I allow you into this. Then I'm only depending on myself. It's got to be both. So today, my brothers and sisters, all of us have a place in our lives where we are not... God wants us vulnerable. God likes us weak. Your weakness is not a problem for God. Your weakness and your brokenness, all of our brokenness, is not a problem for God. It's actually the starting point for God. Our weakness and our powerlessness is where God begins. That's when he comes in. When we are weak, when we are powerless, that's when we are strong, St. Paul says. In my weakness, I find the strength of Christ. And so all of us experience our weakness every single day. We all experience our weakness. We all experience our powerlessness. But what are we doing with it? Are we inviting Jesus into it? A temptation that I'm struggling with, and I keep wanting to fight that temptation, and every time I say to myself, the next time I get tempted, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure I fight that one. And then what happens, you guys? We tell ourselves, yeah, yeah, the next time I'm not going to give in to it. And what happens? <laughs> we fall flat on our face. Why? Because we didn't actually turn to Jesus. We didn't actually beg him for his help. We didn't actually invite him into the temptation. We just tried to do it on our own. So this week, my brothers and sisters, if we're going to pray like everything depends on God, that means that depends on God. That means that we got to do a lot of praying, don't we? So this week is called what? What is this next week called? Say it out loud. So what does it mean to be holy? It means that everything that you do is set apart for only God. So this week has to look different than any other week. Especially what we call the Easter Triduum, which is basically Wednesday night until Saturday, Saturday night and Sunday. Those are the most holiest days of the year. They're the most powerful days of the year. And what's so beautiful about Holy Week, you guys, is that we're not just remembering these events that took place 
Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and then Jesus being scourged, and then dying on the cross and rising. What's so amazing, you guys, is that Holy Week is like a time machine. Holy Week is like entering into a time machine. And when you enter in that machine, you literally get to go back to those events in a spiritual way. Where God literally wants you to go back to those events because those events changed all of history. All of history was changed because of those four days. That whole week changed all of history. And so, I challenge you this week to do a couple of things. I challenge you, especially Thursday, Friday, and Saturday until you go to Mass. No music. No TV. No social media. Let's just put it this way. If, God forbid, your, pa your parent or the closest person to you died, would you be going out and having amazing dinners? Would you be watching a Netflix show if your mom or dad died? Would you be um, going out to the Nadi? Would you be going out to Birmingham? I wouldn't. Does Jesus' death mean anything to us? Do we care? Does it matter? Because our behavior is going to show that, right? Like, if I only come to church once a year on Good Friday because, you know, I guess I, guess I got to go think, Jesus, he died for me. I guess I have to. <laughs> wow. How much do we really appreciate it? How much do we really understand it? So my challenge for us this week is... Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we have so many beautiful events at the church. All of our churches do. All of our churches. Wednesday, we're going to have confessions here in the church from 7 to 9. And we're going to have like 10, 11 priests that are going to be here. If you haven't been to confession in a long time, this is the right time to do it. To be freed from your sins. To be freed from the burden. Thursday. Thursday is Holy Thursday. It's, it's the day that we celebrate Jesus giving us the priesthood and Jesus giving us his body and his blood, the Last Supper, giving us the Eucharist. This is the greatest gift that Jesus gave us, the Eucharist. Come to a Holy, a holy Thursday Last Supper Mass, the washing of the feet. Holy Thursday night, all of our churches are going to be open until 5 o'clock in the morning, all of our churches. Jesus said that night, he said one thing to his apostles when they fell asleep. He said, could you not stay up one hour with me? One hour. Jesus, Holy Thursday night, asks for one hour with, uh, with him. Can we do it? Can we spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes? And you, Good Friday, watch the passion of the Christ. If Jesus did it for you, you can watch it. Don't tell yourself, it's too hard for me. This is not something you should see once. This is something that we should look at all the time. We should always be meditating on the passion of Jesus, not once a year. Watch the passion of the Christ. Watch Jesus of Nazareth. Be emotionally, mentally, and spiritually connected. And as you do this, you are really telling God, save me. Save me from whatever it is that we need to be saved from. The more we show up, the more we are making ourselves available to God. And the more we are available to Him, the more He can save us. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed... ...and rebuked the lack of faith of their fathers. With wonder they praised the one who was seated on the colt, as if seated on a cloud. We too join them in their praise as we sing... Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes and will come in the name of the Lord in great glory to save us.
made Christ to a sacrifice for our salvation and commanded us to make a memorial of his death, burial, and resurrection, accept the sacrifice from our hands by his grace and mercy forever. Amen. By your command, our Lord and our God, by your command, our Lord and our God, by your command, our Lord and our God, these glorious, holy, life-giving, divine mysteries are placed and set upon the absolving altar until the second coming of our Lord from heaven. To him be glory at all times and forever. Amen. May this sacrifice be accepted and sanctified by the word of God and the Holy Spirit, that it may be for our help and salvation and life everlasting in the kingdom of heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. On the holy altar, let us remember the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Forever and ever. Amen and amen, friends and apostles of the only Son. Let all people say amen and amen. On the holy altar, we recall St. Joseph with the triumphant and the crowned martyrs. You will raise him. We believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from with them on the day of the resurrection from the dead good hope and share inheritance of life in the kingdom of heaven with perfect charity and true faith we celebrate your gift to us and we raise to you glory honor thanksgiving and praise now at all times and forever Amen. peace be with you of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us, now at all times and forever. Amen. Lift up your thoughts. The sacrifice is offered to God, the Lord of all. It is right and just. The name of the glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is worthy of glory from every mouth, thanksgiving from every tongue, and adoration and exaltation from all creation. O oh Lord, you created the world in your grace and its inhabitants in your compassion, redeemed mankind in your mercy. With countless heavenly beings who worship your greatness, myriads of angels, beings of light and spirit who glorify your name. And with the holy cherubim and the spiritual seraphim who offer adoration to your majesty, they proclaim by saying... Are filled with his 
himself and took the form of a slave. He left us a memorial of our salvation, this mystery, which we offer before you. <clears throat> On the night he was betrayed, he took bread with his sacred hands and raised his eyes to you, God as Almighty Father, and gave you thanks and bless. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, in need of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. In a similar way, after the supper, he took the cup of the sacred hands and gave you thanks and bless. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, the mystery of faith, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. As you have commanded us, we are humble, weak, and feeble servants have gathered here to celebrate your great mercy towards us, which cannot be repaid. For you, our Lord and our God, have assumed our humanity, that we might live in your divinity. You've exalted our lowliness, raised us from our fall, revived our mortality, forgiven our debts, justified our sinfulness, enlightened our minds and overcome our enemies. And for your help and graces towards us, we raise to you glory, honor, thanksgiving, and praise, now at all times and forever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, accept the sacrifice which we offer you for all of your blessings bestowed on Our Lady, the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, to Saint Joseph, her just spouse, all the just and pious fathers have been pleasing to you, all the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, confessors. We offer it also for the Holy Catholic Church and for our Holy Fathers, Mar Francis, the Pope of Rome, Mar Luis, the Patriarch, Mar Francis, Bishop of our Diocese, and Mar Brahim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, monks, and nuns. Accept the sacrifice, O Lord God Almighty, for all who are in sorrow and distress the needy and weary, the sick and the afflicted, for all the deceased who have departed from our midst, and for this people who gaze and await your mercy. May this sacrifice be accepted, our Lord and our God, for all who are present before your holy altar. Hear their prayers, pardon their sins, and forgive their iniquities. Also for this country and its inhabitants, this city and those who dwell in it, protect us, O Lord, by your grace, and dispel all evil from us. Grant us your peace and harmony all our days. O Lord, your humble and weak servants who are gathered in your name, and we stand before you at this moment. We have received through tradition the example of your Son. Lord, rejoice in glorifying and exalting. We commemorate and we celebrate this great, holy, life-giving and divine mystery of the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Silence and reverence, stand and pray. Peace be with us. May your Holy Spirit come, O Lord. For this great and marvelous providence for us, we praise and glorify you without ceasing in your church redeemed by the precious blood of your Christ. With praise in our lips and radiant faces, we raise glory, honor, thanksgiving, and praise to your living, holy, and life-giving name, now at all times and forever. Amen. Amen. Cleanse the of our iniquity, our Lord and our God, with the sweet aroma of your pleasant love. Wash us of every stain of sin, O good shepherd, who searched for us, found us lost, and delights in our return. 
Forgive our debts and sins, those that we know as well as of those of which we are unaware. In your grace and mercy. Amen. The grace of your mercy, our Lord and our God, draws us near to these glorious, holy, life-giving, divine mysteries, although we are unworthy. <clears throat> we are unworthy. With true faith in your name, O Lord, we approach these holy mysteries. In your mercy we break, and in your compassion we sign the life-giving body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The precious blood is signed with the life-giving body of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The sacred body is signed with the forgiving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now at all times and forever. Amen. Let us approach with piety and reverence the mystery of the precious body and blood of our Savior. With a pure heart and true faith, let us recall his passion and meditate on his resurrection. For our sake, the only begotten of God took from humanity a mortal body with a rational and a mortal soul. By his life-giving laws and his holy commandments, he led us from error to the knowledge of the truth. According to his plan of salvation for us, the firstborn of our humanity was tested on the cross. He rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. He gave us his holy mysteries by which we recall all his graces for us. Therefore, with an overflowing love and a humble will, let us receive the gift of eternal life. Let us participate in the mysteries of the church through pure prayer and deep contrition. With hope in our repentance, let us convert from our iniquities Weep over our sins and ask mercy and pardon from God, the Lord of all, as we forgive our neighbors their offenses. Let us purify our conscience from division and dispute. Sanctify our lips by your grace. And make us worthy, our Lord and our God, to stand always before you with pure hearts and radiant faces. With filial confidence from your mercy, we call upon you and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Yes, O Lord God Almighty, you are good and Father, full of mercy. We beg the greatness of your compassion. Do not let us fall into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from the evil one and his hosts. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the authority in heaven and on earth, now at all times and forever. Amen. قد شال قديش يا عيب شال موسى 
Sanctify our bodies. Precious Lord, purify our conscience by your mercy, as you are the May the gift of grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be perfected in all of us through his mercy. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the church calls us to receive the body of the Son and to drink from his chalice in faith in his kingdom.
Spirit, we have all approached and shared in the reception of these glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries. Let us thank and glorify God who has given them. Glory to him for his indescribable gifts. Let us pray. Peace be with us. We praise you, O Christ, and we bless you, for you have come and visited our hearts this day by receiving your body, blood, and your divine word. We beseech you that the mysteries we have received may bring the fruits of hope, peace, and joy forever. Amen. Amen. Barachmah. God, who has blessed us with every spiritual grace in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord, has also given us his body and blood as a pledge of life that cannot be corrupted. May he bless our assembly. Protect our community Amen. and purify our people Amen. who have come and have been renewed by the power of the glorious, holy, life giving divine mysteries. By the living sign of the Lord's cross, may he be sealed and preserved from all evil, both hidden and manifest, now at all times and forever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Just uh, uh, please be seated for just brief announcements. So just like I said, confessions are going to be on Wednesday from 7 to 9, Arabic, English, and Chaldean here at our church. Um, the other churches will also have um, as well, in case you can't make it Wednesday. Holy Thursday, a Mass of the Lord's Supper, uh, 6 p.m. in English. Um, and then 10 p.m., we're going to have meditations and prayers here in the church and then also in the academy room. And the church will be open all night for you to come and pray at any time that you would like to keep that one hour with Jesus. Good Friday, uh, the church will have English reflections at 10 p.m., but the church will be open um, any time from 5 p.m. all the way until 2 a.m. on Good Friday. Saturday, our English Masses are uh, 3 and 5, and then Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Make sure you uh, get one of these. It's the whole Holy Week schedule, or you can also go on our social media page, St. Joseph Chaldean Church, and you can follow us there. I hope you pray well. God bless you all, and have a blessed Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm.